against such there is no law. But the way the Lord presented this to me was it's that verse of Scripture literally turned inside out. And I'm like, wow. So what I saw was, was basically rotten fruit. You would say, well, you know, and you could look at the verses pre before this where it says in verse 19, now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders. You get the point here. We can go right. on and on. But you see, the thing is, there's not going to be any adultery going on wherever this place was. Right. There's not going to be any fornication. There's not going to be any murders. There's not going to be any of that mm -hmm. because that's works of the flesh. This place, there's not going to be any kind of that stuff going on. That, that time is over with. Mm -hmm. So basically what I saw was rotten fruit in this, this vast pit. So you, you were experiencing that as you were looking yeah, at it? Yeah, as I'm walking, I'm looking, I'm like, what? And it was, hmm. it was a horrible place. And then the color struck me. And it was the ugliest color I've ever seen in my life. It wasn't black. It wasn't white. It wasn't yellow. It wasn't green. It was a color. I'm just, it was a hideous color. And I'm like, man. And I, and I couldn't describe that color to you until about three years ago I saw this color. Uh, my son and I, David, we, we drag race. That's what I do in the summertime on Saturdays. I, it's a great outreach for me. I love the sport. I love the people. It's, it's what I like to do. And it was probably the hottest day of the year that day, and it was very humid. And I had just gone down the racetrack with my car, and I was coming back up the return road. You know, after we race a quarter mile at a time. Now I'm coming back, and as I'm coming back, I saw the ambulance leave, and I'm like, wait a minute. I know it's not me. And the person that I was racing against, he didn't crash. He's right next to me. Where's he going? Well, here... Somebody was pushing his car up in, in the pit area, you know, by hand. We, we do that a lot to keep the cars from running. You know, race cars, they don't, you know, it's, it's a race car thing. Here the man had a massive heart attack. And I, and I went up there, and I wanted to see, you know, being a minister, I wanted to see if there's something, you know, maybe I could do. I didn't know who it was, but, you know, we're all kind of a family up there. And when I got there, he had already, he had already passed, and I saw that color. I saw it in his face. It was a pasty, nasty gray. Hmm. So what I saw was death. Right. That's what was in that pit. And uh, I'm like, I, I, I don't want no part of this. And, you know, you put two and two together, you know what I saw. I mean, I didn't see the flames. I didn't hear the cries. Right. You know, I'm sure that somewhere down there that stuff exists. But in essence, I saw... What Jesus described, I saw a garbage dump. I saw rotten fruit. Mm -hmm. I saw death. And, but, it, you know, it, it was empty. It was void of anything good. Right. And, you know, just put aside the flames and all that stuff. Just can you imagine being in that place for eternity? I, I, oh, my gosh. It's, it's a, it, 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 ugh, horrible, horrible. Well, Fortunately, we didn't stay there. We were walking, you know, but this right. was an observation that I made. Right. Because where we were going, it was, you know, you could call it a road. I mean, it, it, I didn't see trees. I didn't see, you know, it's not like a, you know, I didn't see buildings. I didn't see anything like that. It was just we were on this road, and as, as we're passing, this was off to my left. Well, the angel, he brought me to this place. He stopped. He let go of my hand, and he left me alone. Now, what I'm going to share with you next, especially this first part, it still haunts me today. It, it, it haunts me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think my, you know, who I am, my greatest fear is loneliness. I, I even from when I was a, a little kid up till now, I, I don't like being alone. I just, I mean, with the Lord, we know we're, we're never alone. That's obvious, but. You know, in the flesh, we, we feel that way sometimes. You know, we feel alone. Well, where I was at, I wasn't sure where I was, but I was alone, alone. There was nobody there, but there was something strange about where I was at. It, there was this presence that I felt. It wasn't an evil presence, 
But the presence was so strong that it's like, I, I it's, it's, it's very hard to explain this. Mm -hmm. But I'll just explain it like I felt. It's like, you know, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to leave. And, but there was no place to go. You know, I was in this place, and there, I had no place. It, where I was, this presence was, was everywhere. But where I was, I was like, like standing here, and the presence was over there. And mm -hmm. there was like a, uh, a gulf or something between us. I couldn't really see anything there. But like a presence of a person? It was a, it was a presence. It, it, that's all, the only way I can explain it to you. I didn't know what it was, but I didn't want to be there. It was mm -hmm. like it was very, uh, I don't know, it, it, it was a little, I mean, it wasn't so much fearful, but it was a very overwhelming presence. It was like, man, I, I don't want to be here no more. I want to leave. I'm very uncomfortable. It was a un very uncomfortable feeling, okay? I didn't hurt or anything, but it was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. well, like I said, there was no place for me to go. So here's, here's the part that, that, that haunts me to this day. And I said, okay, if, if I have to stand here and I have no place to go, surely my wife will stay with me. Nobody means more to me and my wife in, in my life than my wife. I mean, we were only married, uh, what, six years at the time. Now we've been married, what, 34, so you know, our bonds are even closer. But I, I remember looking off and, you know, I, I would use this term, it was as if, well, she didn't exist. She never existed. My wife was never born. Hmm. That's the thought that hit me. And it was true because I look and it's like. But yet you remembered her. Kind of I knew. I, right. You I remembered, remembered her. But, she didn't but when I went to look for her, it was like she never existed. Right. And it was at that point I looked off. And the best way I can explain is, is that I'll tell you what I saw. I saw eternity. That's the only way I can explain it to you. I, I saw nothing, but I saw everything. If you can, if you can well, try to, who, is there anyone out there that can explain eternity? Right. I. I. <laughs> I no I, beginning, no end. Right. That's a tough. I mean, thought. we're ruled by the clocks. You know, we really are. We're ruled right. by time. You know, we always got to be somewhere all the time. You were on vacation, you know, we got, you know, we were ruled by time because we know it's going to end. You know, we got to go right. back to work and, you know, whatever. Well, she wasn't, she was never born. And the word, there was one word that hit me there when I was standing there, and the word was separation. And I looked that word up in Webster's. It says, a place where a separating occurs, a break, a division, a gap, to separate implies the putting apart of things previously united. That's, that's the part that hurt. It's joined or assembled, that something that's been previously united, joined or assembled, not, you're not associated or connected with any other. You are having existence as an entity, a thing that has definite individual existence, distinct. In other words, there was nobody else. Not only wasn't my wife there, there was nobody there. Hmm. Nobody. Because I, I remember after I said, well, if my wife won't stand with me, certainly my child will. Because we didn't, you know, John was carrying my son. And, and you know, we didn't, we didn't know, you know, if we were going to have a boy or a girl. And, uh, uh, and I said, well, certainly my child. And the same thing. Hmm. So I was there alone. And I said, what? What? Where am I? You know, what, what, what is this place? And then I realized I saw eternity. That's the best way I can explain it to you. Mm -hmm. I looked off and I could see, I, I could see nothing. But what I saw was everything. I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, I, I'm trying to describe what I saw. And it's like I am in a place. And then the next scripture came to me, and it was Isaiah 57, 15 said, God inhabits eternity. That's where he lives. Mm -hmm. And then I realized where or what I was feeling. I was feeling the presence of God. But I didn't want to be there. I wanted out of there. Because it was God and I was me. I just, you know, you, you could say I felt undone. You could say, I, you know, sin, whatever you call it, whatever you want. But it's like, I, I, uh. 
I want out of here. And then the next scripture came to me. It's in Romans 14, 12. So then each of us shall give account of himself to God. It was a form of judgment. We're all going to be there someday. We are going to stand there by ourselves. We're not going to have our wives there to encourage us or our husbands or our kids. And it's going to be there. It's going to be like nobody was born. And it, we are going to be our own separate entity. Wow. It was a very scary place. And like I say, it, it still haunts me. You know, even after, and, and what happens next was, you know, it, uh, I remember next was off to my left, someone was approaching me. And I knew, I knew immediately who it was. It was. It was the Lord. And then another scripture came to me. It says, it's in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam, all die. Even so, Christ, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. There's no in-betweens here. Either you're with the Lord or you're not. So these, these scriptures were coming to you during this yes, experience? Yes, as like it was as happening, they were hitting me. To you, right. That scripture came to mind. Came, it, it was spoken to me, you know, either it, it been, and it came as clear as a bell. Mm-hmm. You know, and after 28 years, they're still there. Uh, and it was this one that hit me next, and it was, For as in Adam all shall die, and even in Christ all shall be made alive. And that alone was teaching me volumes. You know, it's either you know the Lord or you don't. There's no in-betweens. There's no other way. You know, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Right. No man could come unto the Father but, you know, but by, by me. And as soon, and here's the beautiful part, as soon as the Lord showed up and he came next to me, I immediately, and I mean immediately, went from being a total stranger to God to now I am literally immersed and engulfed in his presence. I mean, uh, covered, filled, inside out with his love, his joy, and his peace. And I, one other time that happened to me, the night I was baptized in the Holy Ghost, I was literally, the Lord just literally took me over in a beautiful way. And I, matter of fact, after I spoke in tongues, I went out. And it, I came to a little later. It was like I was... Uh, it was kind of weird. It was like, you know, I had already been operated on at that point. And it was like being in a recovery room and coming off of anesthesia. And that's basically what it felt like <laughs> that night. But I was immediately just totally swimming in God's presence. And the love and joy and peace was just overwhelming. And it was all made possible because of what you know, what Jesus Christ had done for me and for and for, for everyone. And it was during here that I I saw so many things that it, it's going to be difficult for me to try to explain everything because everything was so intertwined and just everything made sense. You know, we, we look around us today and we wonder why everything is so chaotic. Well, it, everything... Everything means something that we see going on around us. And, you know, I... You know, I know people have questions. You know, why does this happen or why does that happen? I I honestly believe when that day comes, we'll know the answers. To, but to be to be honest, they won't matter anymore. Right. You know, they they won't matter anymore because we would have reached our destiny, our goal, right. and that's to be with God. The once I was in God's presence, the 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 first thing that I can remember was. You know, this is going to sound strange to you, but you're just going to have to roll with me on this. Let's hear it. Yeah, and, and the first thing I remembered, I said, you know, my, my, you know my, 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 I have heroes in the Bible. I have one in the New and one in the Old. And my New Testament hero was Paul because I, I just, the things that he did, you know, were just tremendous, you know. And I'm, I'm not lifting him up, but I just have great admiration for the, the, the great things that he has done in his life and, you know, a great example to follow. Mm-hmm. And I found him. And I could almost describe him to you, uh, but, you know, I can't. But I, I knew it was him. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. And I said, Paul, 